It's a difficult job, you know, families and everything, when you're both working in this industry. You know, it's, it's mm. sometimes good to be married to a civilian, isn't it? Um, but <laughs> <laughs> how, have, how have the two of you coped? How have you, have, you know, does somebody get a chance to have a go for a couple of months? Or you know, how, does it, how has it worked out for the two of you? We've been lucky, I think. That's, that's it, isn't it, John? We well, have been lucky. Uh, we've been married to civilians and it didn't <laughs> work. But because I don't know, it's because they didn't understand the business or they didn't understand the fa fact that you've got to go away from home for big periods of time. Mm -hmm. But because we're both in the same business, I would go away filming for, say, two, two months. Yeah? And I'd go away and do a cabaret in Africa or something. And we just accept it. Yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, we were lucky in that respect that um, we'd never um, worried about going away. I mean, we were lucky. We had my mother living here. In right. fact, we're in her old lounge where she where she lived, you know, and um, <clears throat> excuse me. And so um, because we had a daughter, uh, I couldn't go abroad with John because that wouldn't be fair. I had been before. I, I went on a, um, an African tour with him, which was fine, lovely. But then when he was going on cruises and things, well, I couldn't leave my daughter and I didn't want to, quite frankly. So um, uh, I was stuck at home, as it were, but I could still work locally yeah. because my mother was here and then when I did Rome de Rome for example which I did for well full time three years and uh, I had a little flat up in um, in um, Portinovic. Uh, Portinovic yes looking up oh, the Menai okay. Straits which was beautiful you know well then the family would come up and stay well it was great so, that summer it was a fabulous summer yes 1995 and I, did, I, I didn't have much work that summer no so I spent like six weeks up in Porto Norwich and we yes. on the beach every day oh, just like and that. watching the, the swans taking off on the Menai mm. Strait it's like being in Greece it was fantastic oh it was it was beautiful so I mean you know we'd never worried about that I mean I understand his work was mainly away so he had to go away and if I went filming well then he understood and um we were lucky because we didn't have many times when both of us were going to be away, did no, we? No, no. You know, mm. except when you did, um, when we did uh, The Moonlight. Oh, yeah. We, well, we, yes, we, I, I wrote this thing with all, we, about Frankie Vaughan. And we did a tour of, mm. the, of a thing called Give Me The Moonlight. Uh, but that was taken. But we were home most nights, weren't but we? we? Won't, yes. We would drive and do a show and, back and then drive home. And then know? come back, you know. Yeah. So we didn't have to go away. Mm. Yeah. So not just performing together, writing together. You say on on the beach, you know, when you're writing yes. the, 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 the the program Sounds about right. the, the, yes. the shoe people uh, and, yeah. and this show. How how does it work? Who's the brains? Oh, this was John's show, not mine at all. <laughs> I didn't say that. I said, no, no, I didn't say that. I said, who's the brains? <laughs> brains? Oh, it must be me, of course. <laughs> we of course we wrote same. a musical <laughs> once called Man of Fire. Oh, gosh, uh, yes. D.H., David Howell, he's a character, David. Mm -hmm. He's a good actor now, but he's, he's a bit scatterbrained. He says to me, John, he said, we need a musical. I said, when by? He said, well, I booked the theatre. I said, what are you talking about? <laughs> he said, think of something. I said, what about? He said, gosh. something Welsh. So I said, William Price. Because my grandfather told me all the stories about William Price, mm. and I thought he's a cat. So Alwyn and I sat. Well, Price, you just right. tell me, just explain for the listeners and the viewers. Uh, William Price, who was he? Oh. oh well, Doctor William Price. He was a doctor to start with, but also he was a druid, right. and he he lived outside Pontypridd, didn't he? Yeah. And um, he's in the Santre man Saint, in Santre Saint, yes, and then moved to uh, Pontypridd afterwards. Yeah. But he um, he really uh, started off well, not started off, but he made it. Um, um, it was a, it was a, not advisable. They, they accepted, didn't they? What do you want about? Yeah, cremation. Oh, oh yeah, he he cremated his. Uh, he was a bit of an off the wall character. Mm. Right. I mean, he, he was to do with the Chartists as well, yes. wasn't he? So he was very. Mm. Uh, but he decided he got he got married. Well, he, he had his last child when he was eighty something. Oh, well done. And the child died. He called the kid J Jesus Christ, and he called the daughter Mary Virgin, Mar Virgin, Virgin Mary. Mary. I mean, he was a bit, a bit of an anarchist, right? Yeah. And then when the kid died, he decided to, it was more, you know, natural, to, like the old people had done in the olden days. The old to, druids. To, the old druids was to cremate him, which was against the law in those days. Mm. And he cremated the child on top of Clanchester and Hill. Hill. And, of course, there was hue and cry. He was arrested, and they pulled the kid out of the fire. It was horrendous. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. Anyway, that went on and on and on. And then eventually, it, when he died himself, they, they'd... Made made it legal, and he was cremated on top of the hill, and they were selling tickets. There were thousands up there. Thousands of people went to. So good, real st good story then for for a musical. Very and good story. How long did you yeah, have? He, did wanted, you, did you he wanted it in Welsh and English in two weeks. Yes. You know, and we had fifteen songs we wrote. 
<laughs> oh, gosh. Yes. I mean, we'd write it very differently now. I think the songs were good, but yeah. um, the rest of it was really thrown together, you know. And, uh, <laughs> but we got a good writer. We, yes, we did. And uh, it was enjoyable, but oh, it was hard work. Yeah. It really was hard work. <laughs> well yes, done. I've forgotten about that. No. Mm. So uh, you've constantly done. Have, have, did you? You did quite a few pantomimes together. Did you? Did you keep on coming back for yeah, that? Yeah. We, well, the first one was with Paul's Call, <laughs> and then we did Cardiff twice. We yes. did uh, uh, Aladdin uh, with Dickie Hen. No, that was with no. Ted Rogers. Uh, we did um, uh, Robinson, Robinson Crusoe. Crusoe with Dickie Henderson mm. and Orville and, and Keith Harris. Oh, and lovely Nat Jackley. And Nat Jackley was oh, the dame. Yes. Uh, then we did. Quite a few with Stan, didn't we? We did a lot with Stan's yeah. Stan, yes. Yeah. We must have done about six or seven together. Easy. Oh, yes, easily. Yeah, yes. Not and more. I also did one for the Caricature Theatre playing Snow White, and I wrote the music for that as well. Fantastic. Um, yes, yes, which was lovely. We did it in the Sherman, and we also went to Theatre Awerin in, in um, Aberystwyth with that. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, that was really nice. Now, you mentioned Mavan Talog, and uh, in, in the uh, Under Milk Wood, uh, mm-hmm. There's a very famous scene with with Ruth and David Jason. Now, then, did oh, you nice. know David Jason before that, or did you get to meet him later on when he became friendly with Mavanwi? No, no. Um, uh, I I met him while he was doing the uh, film. No, good boy. Gave me three pennies yesterday, but I wouldn't. Hello, Gwenny. I'll give you six pennies. <laughs> <laughs> and um, oh, he was really nice. He was good fun. He was really good, and you could tell then that he was going to be famous, you know. Yes. And I remember uh, going to see the rushes one night, and everybody said, "Ah, now that is a person to look out for," because he was just a jobbing actor then, like most of us, you know. And anyway, so um, I, I was quite friendly with him. And uh, if he was in Cardiff at any time, he'd call around, he'd have a meal with me and my first husband. And and then we got to know him quite well. So um, I was doing Telephant with um, Mavanwi. And uh, one Saturday, uh, we went over a little bit. I think it was the night we had the monkey in the um, in the show. Yeah, we had a little monkey in the show. Not every week, but somebody brought this monkey, and the monkey had gone up into the oh, lighting gosh. and gone up there, and really didn't like where he was. And yeah. so Mavan, we had gone to buy some grapes and tried to get him back down with the grapes. You see, which actually did work, so that was fine. Anyway, I, I digress. So what happened was, um, I said to Mav, "Look, I said we were supposed to be. I was supposed to be going to see David tonight. I said David Jason in the Sherman. He was doing." Norman conquests. I said, but uh, we've gone over now. I said, it'll be halfway through. I said, I better go and see him. Oh, I'll come with you, she said, just for a bit of laugh. Okay. So she came with me. So um, uh, at the end, I saw him and uh, he said, oh, lovely, how are you? And this happened the other. I could see my mother. You know. So he said, uh, who's your friend? I said, oh, yes. I said, my friend is Mavanwe. I said, we've just been doing this telly together. Oh, oh, hello, how are you? And this, that, and the other. Anyway, within a few days, I had a letter, as he used to call them, a little billet doux. So um, <laughs> I should have kept them all, shouldn't I? Yeah, yeah, it's worth a fortune. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, I'd never give them. No, no, anyway, no, no. anyway, so um, he, he wrote to me and he said, do you think your friend would um, go out with me? I said, I really wouldn't know. I don't know. Anyway, I showed the letter to Mum. She said, oh, I don't know. Oh, no, I don't think I will, I'll bother. I said, oh, go on. I said, he's, he's good fun. I said, he's, he's fine. He's OK. Anyway, she did go and see, uh, see him and she went out for a meal. She wasn't totally impressed, but it, it grew and grew. And then uh, they were together for 18 years. <laughs> there we are. You were, you were the catalyst. You were the... I'm the, afraid so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, nothing to do with me. I was away at the time. <laughs> oh, so you were in Australia. <laughs> I was in Australia. <laughs> <laughs> um, Theodore Penner, then, uh, Company Penner, is that the oh, right yes. word? Yes. Now then, women. Theodore Penner, yeah, yeah. Women. Uh, women. If, you know, if we ever needed to um, support and champion women, now's, <laughs> now's as good a time yes. as any. But you were there years ago doing that with theatre. Yes. Um, well, what happened was um, Erica Arian and uh, Rosamund Shelley, they, uh, they were good friends and they had a um, coffee one morning and they decided, crumbs, you know, we're not getting enough theatre work. They're, you know, and women in particular, surely we, we, we could do something. So they decided that they would form a theatre company if they could. And then Erica would ask this one and that one and what have you. And in the end, we had about 11 of us. And um, we uh, we 
decided, well, it was Erica's idea, actually, that we would do the House of Bernarda Alba and um, we would uh, put it on somewhere. So we had um, a little meal. Uh, I joined them when we were having a, a curry in Erica's house. And she said, right, now you will play so and so and that's that. Oh, I'll, would you mind playing the two parts? You can play the, the, the mad old grandmother and perhaps you play uh, Prudentia as well. I said, oh, oh, yes, yes, fine. Okay, so I read it and what have you. So we put it on in, um, in Newport. And the whole idea of this company was to put women center stage because we were looking around and oh you know there were only so many parts for older women in particular we wanted work for ourselves as well you know mm. let's be fair and um so we put it on uh, um on a sharing basis and we thought well how on earth are we going to get any money so we wrote to friends relations and uh, people in the media um television companies, and they all gave us so much. And in the end, we had £3,000. So we decided, right, we'll have a nice set and we'll have the clothes made and everything. So that's what we did. And we put it on. And I think we made £50 each as well at the end, which was fantastic. But um, we did this twice. We then did the Trojan Women. And then we went on to um, ask the um, Welsh Arts Council if we could get a grant. And we got some grants. And we did very well out of the, um, out of the Welsh Arts um, association really because they um, they did support us a lot yeah. and uh, we managed to go for ten years. Isn't that brilliant? You know, and, and it, yeah. it, it is. You know, it, there are different groups that don't get enough hi highlight on stage. Sometimes you, you've just got to do it yourself, and that, that's a brilliant example yes. to, to to all yes. of us. Well, um, we felt that we could we could choose what we wanted to do. Mm. in the hope that people would like it. And we did it in a different way. And Erica, really, she she was fantastic. And she directed every uh, everyone, you know. And it, it was a nice age mix as well, wasn't it? Obviously, there were the more mature yes. cast members, but yes. you, you seem to be encouraging young, younger women. Oh, yes, particularly well. in the, the first two productions we did and, um, and in a few others as well. And, uh, you know, it, they were all classic, classical plays. That was the important thing, really. Some were foreign. Uh, mm -hmm. But we did the English translations, obviously. And um, one interesting thing was the maids. And the maids had originally been written in French, and it was for um, two boys and uh, two young boys playing the maids. And uh, Erica said, no, I'm going to have two old women playing the maids. Oh, it was you and Christine, wasn't it? Was it was me and Christine. And then there was a mistress there as well. So the three of us were more or less the same age. So we were the old maids and we were really nasty by now, you know. And um, it really worked well. I played the murderer. No. Oh, yeah. yes. And usually I have With that nice face. Thoughts, you know. With that face. Yes. Never, Johnny. Oh, I tell you what, you take my hair away and whoa, I can I can look quite horrible, I can show you. <laughs> Oh. Brilliant, um, Johnny. What what's special yeah. about Alwyn then? Not not as a person, but as a, as a performer. What's special oh. about? Because you must have seen her well, so many times on stage. Yeah, well, the thing is with Alwyn, she's she's a better actor than me because that's why you say she's an actor that sings, and I'm a singer that acts. Mm -hmm. So I've learned quite a bit from Alwyn, and um, I think vice versa. Absolutely. Um, so we we complement each other really. Mm. I, I think that's the main thing. I mean, uh, she's very. Um, Bossy at times. Oh yes, <laughs> and so are you. Rather controlling. At times. Uh, that's what we've been together forty years. <laughs> they said it'd never last. Yes, I know. <laughs> I'm going to ask the same question to you now. All we're not special about him as a performer. Oh, fantastic! Because I remember the first time I saw him uh, performing his act, as it were, and we. Uh, it was during the uh, fourth call. Yeah, the panto. Uh, the panto. Yeah. And we went to do some uh, charity uh, show for somebody or other. I don't know what it was. And of course, all I could do was just sing a couple of little ditties here and there, you see. And um, and so I saw him doing his his uh, actual act and with his father. And his father was fantastic. And they were singing Cecilia. And I said, oh, oh, I said, lovely. And I said, I like your suit as well. It was the great suit, do you remember? <laughs> I, used to go this, I used to go to this bloke called Robbie Stanford to make my suits in London. And Robbie used to make all the star suits. And I, I, mm. I couldn't really afford it, but I, I, I have one suit a year off this guy, right? Yeah. And he was a real Jewish tailor. He was fabulous, old Robbie. Mm. And uh, I mean, he used to do stuff for Engelbert Umperding, Tom Jones, Glenn Campbell. I mean, 
Mm. Eddie, when you ever meet, I had this beautiful suit, mate. I never forget the story you told me. He, I said, look, look, Robbie. I said, can I? I've, I've been up twice now for a for a, a fitting. I said it's costing me a lot of money. You know, I can't really afford it. Can't you just send it down now? It's ready on the train. He said, no, I can't do that, John. I sent six to America for Glen Campbell. He went Pan Am, and they lost them all. <laughs> Oh, oh, they were right characters. <laughs> yeah, so I had this lovely grey suit, didn't I? And then when he did his show in um, Monte Carlo, um, I was doing a series down here for um, HTV. I think it was oh, it was S, S. Pedro Rec by then, and it was called Colleg. So I had about four or five days off. So I decided to go and see the show in Monte Carlo. Oh, and it was a fabulous show. It had been choreographed by uh, Clive Hicks Jenkins. Yeah, it? yeah, yeah. And John had four girls uh, from the uh, pantomime, and uh, he took his own band with him as well. Oh, it was a fabulous show. You know, he was singing in French and in Italian and English and it's just, oh, just lovely. So um, I, I always like people who are very talented. She's a, she's a, <laughs> a talent, talent freak. freak. <laughs> <laughs> so look Let's, out. See, <laughs> if, if you think of the two of us, right? Owen is more, you work with other people and mm. you're directed and you're, you, you, yes. you, you, whereas I was a one man band, if you like. I'd always been grown up as this single performer doing cabaret and summer seasons of pantos and so on. So we were a different kettle mm. of fish. But somehow we we get, I mean, I don't know what it is. We, we complement each other, don't we? Well, yes. I mean, you help me and I hope uh, sometimes I help you. So, you know, that's that's what it's all about, really, isn't it? Now then the children, have, have they got proper jobs? Oh, yes. Oh, my son's got astrophysics and a law degree. Goodness my, me. My daughter's got a, my first daughter's got a mathematics degree. Right. And the other one is an administrator. I mean, none of them are in the business. Mind you, Ellie, Ellen, our daughter, because I've got two by my first wife, and, and our daughter, Ellen, she's she's very with it, isn't she, Ellen? Yes, yes. And she's and a good musical. dancer. Yes. We're, we're doing the Frankie show, right? <laughs> and one of my dancers couldn't come. So I said, you're going to have to do it, Ellen. She said, I've never done it. I said, well, get in the garage. <laughs> and I taught her the routine and she picked it up like that yeah. and went on the stage and did it. And she'd never done it in her life. Yeah. But she never did it again. No, she did it twice. <laughs> she did it twice. She did it once in Cornwall in Truro. Oh, that's right. And she did it in Port Cornwall. Yeah. She said, I don't want a pansy about like you on the stage. No. I said pansy in about bought this house. <laughs> <laughs> No. Yes, and, the, so, uh, yeah. and then the grandchildren as well. The grandchildren are definitely, oh, they've, they've, oh, they've got I, the I bug, haven't they? Very, oh, I reckon they're going to do something. Always look up the bright side of the Two or six. Two or six. One is four and one is three. Yeah. Yeah, that's and the three-year-old look out. <laughs> She's a character. Of course, Alwyn, you've got a you've got a TV show here this weekend. Uh, yes, that's right. Yes, on the Monday, it's um, it's a, a, a talking um, under the stars. So um, uh, it's from Tinopolis and Ellen Fleer. Uh, asks me questions about what I've done really and what oh, they do they do the garden to look beautiful uh, it's a bit cold but we do have blankets <laughs> over us and it's um yes we're doing that and um I, I'm also going to do a pilot for the BBC of a of a sitcom so that's what I've got in the and you just line. finished doing a film with yes you? oh you tell us about the film then yes. what, what 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 was the film yeah. about um well the film is called save the cinema and it's all about the lyric theatre as it is now in Carmarthen, which was the, the Lyric Cinema. And it's about this lady, um, Liz Evans, who uh, decided that uh, she was going to save the cinema because they wanted to pull it down and uh, build a, a shopping precinct there. And she fought against it. And it's a lovely story. It's um, particularly these days, you know, everybody is working to try and get this um, cinema. And what she does is she writes to uh, Spielberg and Spielberg says, yes, OK, um, you can have a copy of um, what's the film? Um Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. And he said it's going to be um it's going to be premiered in London, but you can have a copy and you can you can put it on the same night in Carmarthen because you're saving a cinema. And so it's it was fantastic to to actually film in the lyric 
as it is now. And uh, it was about a lady who actually saved the lyric. And of course, her son is Wynne Evans, yeah. one of her sons. Go compare. Yes. Mark, yeah, yes. Mark, the, the and Mark, Mark and Wynne uh, are in the film as well. In the mm. show. And, and they treated you well with the limousine in the morning? Oh, yes, 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 they did. They, they would pick me up sometimes, half past five in the morning, but never mind. She had to get um, tested every day for COVID. I know, yes, they were fantastic, actually. Yes. And um, uh, you you couldn't go on set unless you, you'd you had your um, mm-hmm. your uh, test, you know, which was fair enough. Uh, so they looked after us very well and uh, brought me home safe. And then if I was doing uh, alternative days, they would put me up in a hotel as well. So it was lovely. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. We look forward to that. Uh, Johnny Tudor, you, you're going to go out on the road to the Mal and Johnny show, I, I hear, once the theatre's back open. Yeah, we'll get out there, boy, me and you. Oh, yes, I'll get, 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 get your guitar out, I'll get my tap shoes. Get your tap shoes. Your... <laughs> <laughs> Have you got a size 10, just in case? <laughs> no, well, take eight. Oh, dear. <laughs> It's been, it's been lovely to, to meet you properly. Obviously, I've, it's funny because I spoke to Johnny last week and said, um, although you've become my best friend, I don't think I've ever really spent any time with you. You know, we probably have bumped into each other. And all of the same with you. I've obviously seen you from a I distance, know. seen you on the TV and everything. And it's been a- you, did, you did interview me once. I was doing a play by Mike Povey called oh. Wineb and Wineb. And um, you spoke to me down the line. Down the line. Well, well, well done for remembering. <laughs> it must have been, it must have been a terrible experience. Um, so, lo- know, it was good. Is it? Well, look, have, uh, all the best for the grandchildren, and uh, well, it's it's you. it's goodbye from him, and it's goodbye from her, and it's, it's goodbye from you. From you. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. See you later.